Welcome into the Star Gazing Podcast. It's episode number six. I'm Stephen Holstein. To my right is my co-host Isaiah Killinger. We have our producers Colby Muller. What's up? And Nick Pretch. Hey, what's up? Nick, did I say your uh, name right this time? Actually, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Nick Pretch, everybody. Um, we have our very special guest this week, Reese. Hey. And he is an artist it's here your on boy. Yeah. Big hand for Reese. Skinny yeah. Reese's. Yeah. And uh He's an artist here on campus at UCM. Hey. And uh, Reese, um, I guess to start things out, how did you come up with the name Reese? I don't know, dude. There's a there's a girl with the same name as me. Yeah. And she's, like, popular in, I want to say, like, London or something. I don't really know. She's really hot. But she spells her name the same <laughs> way as me. And I'm like, yeah. I can't, like, use the same name. So I just put, like, periods or dashes, like, on a cover. And I was like, I kind of like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, nobody ever says my name right first because it's spelled weird. So I was like, yeah. I'll just spell it out for him. What do they usually say? Rice, Riss. I got Riley from an old ass sub one time. Substitute teachers suck. <laughs> they're, the, they're the worst. <laughs> sub, sub teachers are the worst at names. That doesn't. I don't, yeah. I don't know where she got it from, but. Yeah. You know. All right. So, I mean, for people who don't know, like, who you are. Can you explain who Reese is? Dude, Reese is this totally dope guy. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Um, I mean, man, I got like a really simple style. Like, I just I make my own beats. Yeah. On like GarageBand, and like I record them and master them. And I don't know. It's mostly like trap R&B kind of bass. I mm-hmm. don't know. I try not to like stick to the same style. I try to switch it up. Yeah, I feel you. Not, uh, none of your songs are like too similar like when i was listening to him i listened to um uh she and mode and your uh first ep the one with uh x's and hoes and yeah, yeah 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 was that the first was that the first one that you were just like what was that called xoxoxoxo okay so hugs i'll call that hugs and kisses yeah so for hugs and kisses was like was that your first like real step toward trying to be a musician? Yeah, so all of my stuff was on SoundCloud and my beats were trash and I don't know what happened, but I just like I started getting better. And uh I had a girlfriend at the time and like I, I wrote one song and I was like, I could totally write a whole E P mm-hmm. and so uh for Valentine's Day I gave that to her and I dropped that E P on Valentine's Day. I like sold copies at school and shit. Yeah. Is that what you that's also like I don't think I've heard a song that isn't about really correct me if I'm wrong, but about a relationship. It seems that that's what seems to inspire you the most is your relationship specifically with girls. Yeah. Um I mean, there's some stuff where I touch on other topics. Like overdue, I touch on a lot of different stuff. Um but yeah, most of my motivation comes from girls cuz I mean, that's where hell is. That's where what? That's where hell is. That's where hell is? That's where yeah, hell is. Yeah, dude. Bitches put you through some shit. Damn. I mean, seriously. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't yeah. say it like that, but. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. No, yeah. It's happened. Yeah. It's happened. Um, I mean, a lot of it's girls, just like tragic life stuff. I don't know. I just, I touch on what I'm going through. Yeah. You're s- so, like, would you say that the most recent song you put out, how, how, often, how long does it take you to make a song? Usually, I usually. I mean, I know it's probably different every time, but, like, is... Um, well, so, you know how I told you that I don't have classes on Thursdays? No. Oh. So, usually I go home on Wednesdays, and then I try and, like, record a whole track on Wednesday nights, and then I go into work on Thursday. Okay. So, typically, it'll take me, like, one night to make a beat and record the song, and then I just edit it throughout the rest of the week. Yeah, where are you from? Lee Summit. Lee Summit. I live in Greenwood. That's where Lee I claim Summit. I don't really mess with Lee Summit too much. Yeah, damn. Too much suburb. <laughs> so you've been doing every. So you've been doing everything <laughs> yourself the whole time, or when did you? Or like, did you start by getting beats from like YouTube and SoundCloud? Um. Or from the start, you were like, I'm gonna be this. I don't know, one man band. I mean, it wasn't even like, I don't know. It was so. At first, I bought like two or three beats from like beatsforrhymes.com or something like that and those worked they're like rap beats but i was like i don't really want to stick to like a rap style i don't want to be a white rapper yeah (laughs) you know like there's there's too many obstacles to overcome with that and like i'm not trying to pretend that i'm hard you think so yeah like 
I don't know. I wanted to be a musician, not just like a rapper. Because mm, if you like corner yourself in as a rapper and then you try to start singing, I feel like that's a lot harder than like singing and then going into rapping. Mm. So, <clears throat> with that, what got you started? Like, was it just your love of music or were you like, I, this is something I can be good at and it's something I can kind of have this sort of monetary um, success with or was it just more cathartic, more just out of passion? Um, I mean, out of, I didn't want to spend my money on beats because yeah. I was too broke. So I was like, eh, I'll just make them and they're mm -hmm. really bad. But eventually, like, as I got better, I was like, I mean, if I keep improving and I keep working on it, then I don't really have to worry about spending it. Yeah, I feel and you. It, like, honestly, I think it helps me develop more of a style rather than just, like, tagging onto these other beats because I'm, like, originating my own sound from the instrumental all the way to the vocals. I feel you. And how would you describe your, like, style? You said it's not really rapping or singing, but, like, what is it? I don't know if I have, like, a musical style that I stick with, but more of just a production style. If that okay. makes sense. Like, I have a sound to my voice, and, like, to the way I record everything that is kind of distinct, yeah. I think. Yeah, okay. So, um, how long have you been making music? Uh, first song I dropped was when I was 15, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, that one was, like, a rap one. That one did, like, somewhat good in my high school. But, again, I didn't want to try to sound hard. Right. Um, but... Uh, also, kind of what like what I mentioned about like our voices yeah. sounding different. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did have like some music that I would sing, but I didn't want to record it because I hated my singing voice. Yeah. So that's also yeah. kind of why I stuck to rapping. But um, overdue, I don't know if you saw that EP. I think on maybe. Spotify and everything. Yeah, the first track on that called "Find Someone." That one I recorded when I was 15, but I didn't want to drop it, so I just like kept it until it was time. I think I remember you putting that on like uh, Snapchat or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there like, so who, so do you think, were you inspired musically by someone? Like, because you had to have heard, you know, something to put this foundation on, because you're not just going to pick stuff up and know what you want to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, <sighs> There's all kinds of people. I think Chris Brown, I mean, not necessarily recording-wise, but just vocally-wise, I was inspired by him to just, like, sing a lot and improve my voice. Yeah. Um, and then, like, once I found Black Bear and, like, people along that genre, and, like, this dude named Dyson, mm -hmm. um, I just liked the way their voices sounded in the beats and everything, and I was like, I kind of want to do something with that style. And it took me a little bit to find, like, how to make that, but... Um, Eventually, I, like, made my own out of it. Do you think that what you listen to, like, still influences what you make? Or are you trying to just kind of get a feel for what's out there and then go the other way? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I think that some artists kind of, like, open up what you can talk about. Like, there's some stuff that, I don't know, like, you don't, you don't really think about hearing on the radio or anything. So you don't right. really think about writing about it. Yeah. And, like, there's some artists, like, Kevin Abstract and all these other dudes who like they don't really care about what people are thinking about their issues mm -hmm. they just like they talk about it because they need to yeah and so that's kind of how I use mine um but I think I think there's definitely a lot of aspects in other music that I incorporate into mine just like sounds and mm -hmm. voices that I like that I try to mix in and just some kind of like additions to music that I try and mix in mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say any like I don't know like any riff styles or anything yeah. Do you do you write songs? Yeah. You write songs, you don't just or or are there times I don't know. I guess it's different for everyone. It's kind of a general it's a weird question to ask. Like do you write every song you do or do you oh, yeah. so you just take time, you don't kinda ever like go in and just feel it? Just like freestyle it? Yeah. Um like transition transitionally I do some freestyle stuff like just I don't know, like, scat type of stuff in the background or just adding riffs. Oh, yeah. Um, but, no, like, with lyrics, I always try and make sure that it, like, sounds perfect and is poetically mapped out because I don't want it to, like, I don't want people to hear it and be like, that doesn't even make any damn sense. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, like, I I've, I've heard people like that, and I feel like, um, <coughs> as a, I think as a musician, especially, like, who's started out on SoundCloud or whatever, I have to be really careful about, like, my credibility 
because yeah. like if somebody hears something and they're like oh that doesn't make any sense then i'm just like another soundcloud rapper or whatever i feel you like another wannabe i feel you and i, I want to be professional i want to be seen like that yeah gotcha so you said that um you kind of your music's about things that you've you know been through and i know you said a lot of it's about girls but like what are some of the other things that like really you know like touch you like that you make songs about um like home life stuff uh I don't really have like a relationship with my biological family because we didn't really get along so I ran away and I got my own family now they're awesome um so I touch a lot about that stuff I'm trying to like move away a little bit from that stuff though because yeah. I don't want to like dwell on the past actually like in high school they did like multiple interviews about me and like about my music and I was like okay like we're gonna talk about my music and show yeah. some of that shit off and every single time it was about my home life and I was like dude right like it has to do yeah. with my music, but it's not my music, so. I feel you. No, but that's still important. I mean, that made you who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, it made you who you are as an artist, as a person, more so probably, since you want to kind of put that aside. And when I listen to it, I kind of feel this sort of loneliness, this sort of solace that you have. Everything you make, you know, you say it's by yourself. I can, like, tell. Yeah. It feels like, it kind of feels like you're either in a cave or like out in like a forest to, or like in space like that's what it feels like to me yeah uh man during one of those interviews in high school you'd catch me uh i was just talking off my ass dude <laughs> and they're like um so what how would you describe your music and i was like uh you know that feeling of just like relief when you're walking through the forest and they go mm -hmm. yeah and i go it's like that but like on another planet. <laughs> so, so Man, like you should have seen all the Ma teachers' Forest faces. On Mars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I fuck with that. Yeah, it's very airy. It's very spacey. It feels like it's just open. Like, yeah. I would kind of put it in akin to, like, Rory. Like, I don't know. I, I don't like being compared to people as an artist, yeah, so yeah, I don't I know if you like, if, if you no, like that. Cool. But, yeah, I would, like, the closest thing I would do is uh, Rory dropped an album this year called The Woods, and it was... He recorded uh, like most of it out outside, huh. and uh, That's yeah, it kind of makes me like you give me that feeling of just just natural openness. Man, I like that. I'm glad because yeah. I mean, I always I always say like music. I don't think music is real music unless it creates its own atmosphere. You think so? Yeah, like if it's its own space or whatever, even if it's not like outer space or whatever. Hmm. Like people who can really mix a good track, I think it. It's like its own room. Yeah, right mixing's there. big. Mixing's big. Sure. So with that, um, I noticed that you have um, a couple features that I see. You have um, a song with Sir Hazard, um, and then you have another song with uh, PM Beta and uh, Richard Fisher. Um, just kind of like when you're doing features with people, um, you know, how do you bring your style into theirs? Like, how do you mesh that? Um, I mean. So, like I said, I don't really like to claim a certain style or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, and I try to do that so that when I'm doing features or if I make a certain beat that I like, but it's not my typical style, then I can still blend with it. Yeah. So, for me, it just it's just another beat that I get to, like, kind of just, like, I don't know. To me, they write themselves. Yeah. Like, if the beat sounds a certain way, then it, like, it just kind of tells me what to write about. Um, but... I don't know. I just kind of blend with it. Um, sometimes I get nervous, dude. Like, like when you're on that one with PM Beta. Yeah. Um, the dude's a G. I love that guy. But yeah, like we had like a bunch of people in the room, and I was all shaky and stuff. I oh, didn't like real? it. Yeah, but I killed it. Was, so it, was it like nervous energy? Like you were like, I have to like, cause they were like, cause PM Beta like, from what I can tell, is just he's focused on just like rapping. And yeah. Richard Fisher's a singer. And you're both. Yeah. So you got to kind of, like, prove to PM, like, yeah. not that, not that like, you know, that you need to, that they're, like, the, I don't know, that they make the rules or something. Yeah, no, yeah. I see you. I but, see you. Know, but it's just, like, like, it's like, 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 I had a rapper yeah. and I had I a can singer. Rap and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I can out rap. rap you. I can out sing you. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I wanted to contribute, so I didn't want to, like, outdo any of them. But, I mean, it, for me, I think it was just all the people in the room and the fact that it was, like, my first time recording with them yeah i didn't like know them that well but like they live on my floor i feel you they live in my hall they're like first door by the entrance mm -hmm. they're really dope p and beta if you get a chance to check him out he's dope 
Yeah, for sure. We may. We may. We may get them on here. I don't know. P and Bay, if you're hearing this, that's an open invitation. I will come spit some bars on the podcast. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah hit us up. So, oh, uh, King Hazard. How did Sir that? Hazard. Sir, Sir Hazard. Hazard. Sir Hazard. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Sir Hazard. How did that come about? So, they actually there's a I think it was like all hip hop. I don't even remember the name of the article or whatever. But there's like an article about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just DM'd him <laughs> one time when I dropped like my first like original kind of singing song called yeah. Where Was You, and I was like, hey. Man, like, let's work on something. Because you never really know. I'm like, I've heard of some people just dropping DMs and working on stuff. Even, like, famous people. Mm -hmm. But usually they see it because the other person's famous. They're bringing, like, closer. Yeah, yeah. So I started just, like, hitting some people up. And he was a lot bigger than me. So he was, like, the last person I expected to answer back. And he was like, yeah, dude, let's do a Where Was You remix. And so I was like, okay. (laughs) And, I mean, nothing ever came of it because he was kind of slow on that. But he ended up sending me a beat. And he was like, I don't want this to sound like anything else. I want us to just, I, don't, I want it, it's not average. Let's make it ain't average. Hmm. And I was like, okay. So I don't even remember how long it took me. I think it took me like less than a day. Yeah. But I sent the beat back with like all the vocals and everything. There's actually like an unreleased verse hmm. that I had on there too. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed we didn't include it because I really fuck with that. Damn. But, um, yeah, he, and he liked it right away. That's it was cool. crazy. He was like, oh, dude, this, this shit's crazy. Like, you went off. He, he, like, glorified me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, like, it's this big dude yeah. putting me on a song to feature, and he's, like, glorifying me, just saying how awesome I am. And uh, next thing I know, he's, like, spending all this money on promo and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know. I didn't expect it to blow up the way it did, but he was like, yeah, I'm going to pay for promo. We're going to have, like, 100,000 plays or something. Yeah, I've noticed, I've noticed that song has, what, on Spotify, it's got 162,000 plays. So, like, I was wondering, like, you know, how kind of how that blew up, you know? Because I noticed a lot of his other stuff isn't, like, that popular. So, um, is that just, like, the Reese magic, you think? <laughs> I think <laughs> some of the Reese <laughs> really He just really believed in it and, you know, <laughs> everything. Sometimes everything just works out, you know? Yeah. I Get it's a lightning in a bottle. Yeah. I think it was like I think it was a mix of the beat and just having some like new energy in it. Yeah. Because a lot of his stuff is like even though it's rap, he has like the people who feature in it. It's more like poppy. Mm. They're just kind of like slower. And I think having some new energy on it, it helps like keep that speed up and keep that energy. Like add some stuff that stayed on the topic. I think contributed. But um, I don't think it was. I don't know if it was like the song being better or mm. me having some magic or what, but yeah, mm. like there was some promo put into it and he's been really helpful. Like actually we're about to film a music video this month. Really? Oh, for real? Yeah. I'm about to fly out like later in November. Like actually I think I'm flying out like Thanksgiving day. Damn. Yeah. To, What's up, though? to where? That's what Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're going to go film. And then while I'm there, we're going to record some new stuff. So be expecting some new fire, dude. Hey, that's a big sacrifice, bro. There we go. Hell yeah. Speaking of some uh, new fire from you, your EP Dreams is Hell out now. Yes, his brand yeah. new EP. It'll Dreams. be out. It'll be out when this is yeah. It'll uploaded. Be out when this is we record on Thursdays. This comes out at midnight. So, <laughs> um, just kind of tell us about Dreams. Just kind of like um, you know, how you wrote it. You know, how it you know came about. Uh, what it's about. You know, all that good stuff. I mean, okay, so my EPs, I try to have, like, the same kind of, same kind of, like, technical sound, Mm -hmm. just, like, making sure that the production style is all the same, Um, but I always try and, like, save up my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I want to put out dope-ass singles, but I also, like, I want to keep some of them for myself, Mm -hmm. so I can just, like, shove them all in people's face and be like, (laughs) happy birthday. Right. (laughs) And so, like, all of these tracks are some... They're just, they're super special to me, and they're all, like, some of my proudest works. Um, all four of them, I think, are, like, four of my best tracks I've ever dropped. Really? I'm being completely honest. Yeah. Cool. Let's go so. through, like, if you don't mind, can you, like, go through them, like, track by track? Yeah, so the first one's Don't Fall Behind, and that one's kind of me just, I mean, for my friends, I'm always, like, the one who's there for them. Yeah. And, like, they know that I've been through some shit, so whenever they're going through some shit, like, they come to me, and I help them out, and we talk about it and stuff. And, uh... Drug addiction is a thing, unfortunately. And getting in trouble with parents, unfortunately, is a thing with drugs. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I had a friend who, like, she got in trouble with her parents, and she was, like, going off the rails because of it. And so the first verse is, like, dedicated to her, like, just, like, trying to help her out. And it's kind of, like, since since I saved it, it's kind of old now. But, I mean, that energy's still there. You can still feel the feelings. Yeah. Um, and the second one is about my friend. I'm not going to, like, name names. Right. Okay. But um, he was, like, my best friend. Like, we knew each other front and back. Like, read each other minds and shit. Hmm. And uh, he's, in, he's in rehab right now because of his problems mm. so that second verse is dedicated to him um just trying to like talk to them and like let them know what i'm thinking and help them out and stuff yeah. and show what i'm there for mm-hmm. and the next one is you need jesus wait, wait, wait hold, on, hold on was it uh first let's talk about um don't fall back don't fall behind don't yeah. fall behind okay yeah. sorry so was that hard for you to write or was it like more yeah, I best believe I was like I was crying. Yeah, I was crying when I was writing it. Um, I th- I wrote the first verse, and also the beat is like is so full. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, to me, I think it's like the perfect intro to an EP mm-hmm. because the intro is just like is so subtle and smooth, and like all the synths just blend so well. Yeah, and then right at the end, it like breaks down the beat, and there's kind of a bass drop, but it's like not the typical like. No, you know. And um, then it transitions into the next song. Actually, it's not You Need Jesus. I misquoted that, so you stopped me at the perfect time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, writing it was, it was really hard because of, like, how emotional the topics were. But at the same time, I had a motivation to get it done so that right. I could, like, listen to it, you know? Yeah. So, like, how, okay, how, um, how long ago did you make that track? Because you say you hold on to these? Yeah. Um, probably like mid semester or like yeah, like mid semester, second semester, last school year. Um, I recorded most of "Don't Fall Behind," and then I recorded the second verse for it. Um, this summer. Is that the oldest song? <sighs> Actually, no. No. So mm. that's str- that's. So you're just like kind of like picking favorites for this EP. You're mm-hmm. just kind of you're like over time. You don't ha- you're not saying okay, I'm gonna make an EP, and I'm gonna make these songs for the EP. You just make songs and then kind of collect them. Yeah, like, I mean, because of because of being home all the time during the summer and stuff, I had the time to record all the time. Yeah, like I was just sitting in my room recording all the time and writing, and I was always working on beats, trying to figure out what I could talk about on them, and uh, I don't know. I mean, being able to get that many done, it gives me, like, some choices to pick from. So if I had, like, three tracks that I was ready to release, but I didn't want to release them as a single, then I'd be like, ah, that one's my favorite. Mm -hmm. I love that one. Yeah. Um, And, like, high-energy ones are typically the ones that I'm going to, like, put out first. Yeah. All right. So, um, and you mentioned how that it's, that um, Don't Fall Behind is full, and that's kind of... To me, that sounds like a departure from what you usually do. Is this like the most different? It's very bass heavy, like underlying bass, um, just very constant stream of sound. Yeah, if that makes sense. So like every track, you still manage to have like every track flow into one another. Yeah. All right. So what's not like not like completely, not like concept. Right, right. I've right. always wanted to do that though. That's a goal. But yeah, like um, they have a. I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know how to. You'll see for sure. I feel you. But no, I'll definitely keep it. That'll be the first. You know, you got Vince Staples dropping tonight. You got who else dropping tonight? Ta- uh, Wait, take who? off is dropping. Vince Staples. Oh, okay. He's dropping tonight. Yeah. Take off dropping tonight. You know yeah. what I'm listening to first? Reese. I'm listening to Dreams yeah. first. There we go, baby. I'm listening to Dreams <laughs> first. Good boy. What's track? Oh, okay. So what's the? You said that the bass kind of goes into track two. Yeah, yeah. So that's. And the track two is Powers. And it's spelled like Power X, mm-hmm. because um, so when X died, I'm pretty sure it was like on one of my release dates. So it was like a really shitty release date. Yeah. You know? Um, but he died, and I was like all up in my feelings because I was super into his music. He was an idol, and mm-hmm. like he kind of touches on his inner thoughts, and mm-hmm. I find that as motivation because it's kind of like you kind of gotta have some balls to talk about some stuff. Yeah. And um, when he died, I was really upset. Like I laid in bed all day, and uh. At night, I just, like, went to a dead end in my neighborhood, and I just, like, sat down on a blanket and worked on a beat. Yeah. And 
I was like, I kind of like this beat, but I don't know what to write about. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next day, I was like, man, I, I want to write about stuff. I don't really want to talk about a girl right now. And I'm in my feels about X. So I just started writing about that. And basically, did you guys, like, were you guys on social media when that happened? Yeah. Yeah. Man, like, there was a video of him dying in his car and stuff. Yeah, no one knew if it was, like, real or what was going on. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, and everybody was sitting there with their phones out and everything. Like, nobody w- nobody went to go grab him or anything. Mm, yeah. And that <clears throat> bothered me so much. Yeah. I think that there's a lack of respect in that and that everybody's kind of, like, caught up in their phones and they want to be that person with the video. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that just messed with my head a lot, and that's a lot of what I was thinking about. So I touched a little bit about society just being caught up in technology and seeing everything through phones and not really like caring for them so it says it starts off with like uh the course goes their eyes the eyes they're staring at him like because they're looking at x yeah um but arms crossed because it's power to you Mm -hmm. and so it's kind of like a tribute to x a little bit saying like you deserve more respect than you were given at that time Mm -hmm. but also that like you're a fucking legend yeah like you're you're worth it and like you're gonna be missed and loved and then, just as he did, like, touch, touching on those inner thoughts, that's how I, like, open up with the first verse. Um, but, like, vocally, dude, I love that song. Because mm-hmm. uh, the second verse is very, I don't know. I don't know, man. You don't know? The second verse is just very strong. You think so? Like, strong how? Like, like emotional, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it tells a story without necessarily saying too many words. Okay. So, like, X is a very controversial figure, and you're smart, so you know that. Yeah. So, do you separate, can, do you, and you're one who talks about, like, what you really feel, do you, can you separate art from artists because <laughs> of everything, in the, in the, like, the tape that leaked, where he confesses to stabbing, like, eight people, and... Mm-hmm scaring his girlfriend yeah in some way yeah i mean to some extent it's really hard to yeah um i mean i've i've had idols that i just looked up to and it took me a little bit for me to like get back into them just because of like videos they would come up and earlier you mentioned chris brown oh uh, (laughs) Oh, dude that was that was rough i got through that one eventually but that one was rough um yeah i mean x was he presented himself in a really bad light, and he did some really messed up things. Mm-hmm. Um, but he also talked about second chances, and he talked a lot about like self improvement. Now he wanted to be better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was he was finding a way to prove himself. He didn't get there, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the part that a lot of people don't understand is that like, yeah, at the time when he died, like he really was working on it. That was the thing that I kind of was a little more upset about was that he never really got a chance to redeem himself. He was trying, but you know, for some people like that's just irredeemable. Mm -hmm. And so you're one of the few people I've talked to who still, and like who actually view him as this like icon and like, it's a name that because of what happened, like every, because of everything that happened, he's, gonna be remembered as like one of the biggest He's what the ifs bad guy yeah and a what if yeah that too. because i mean yeah like he he was working on it but he died before he really like he, he died before he got the chance to make or break it you think so yeah he's definitely gonna be loved and missed cool but yeah i mean he was definitely a bad guy in, in the public light for sure Mm -hmm. right but like it all comes back to like you know you say like the respect that he didn't get when he passed and it's like you know it's like a thing like we're all still human you know Mm -hmm. like no matter what happens like we all deserve that respect in those final moments yeah it's like separating the art from the artist like it makes you wonder the people in the moment like were they thinking that and they just like weren't respecting his humanity Mm -hmm. or you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i don't know i don't talk i after listening to some things, I'm just not, I don't talk ill on people who are dead. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. I had a lot of time, like, I had a hard time, like, coming to terms with, like, and, you know, we listened to the Question Mark album together. Yeah. And we were like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. But in the back of my head, I was always like, 
but should I support this person who's right. done these things? Right. You know? I don't know. And you're, like, really tempted? Yeah. Because you're like, oh, this is really good. Yeah. yeah. It's like, this is good, but, like, yeah. by listening to this, I'm supporting this person. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, yeah. Well, that's yeah. Retweet, you know, when you retweet that on Twitter, it's like, you know, that's, like, representative of you. So that's, yeah. like, a very, like, fine line to cross. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's still that's I don't know that's gonna be talked about forever. Yeah, almost. yeah, it's a rough one. Yeah, so, and that that was powers. Yeah, um, track three is you need Jesus. Finally got to that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you need Jesus. Um, I mean, it's kind of like a long ago ex, I guess. Yeah. But she was like doing coke and stuff. Oh wow. And uh, like she dropped out of school and moved to L. A. Like an Instagram model or something now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it didn't work out. Actually. There you go. Reese was dating Instagram models, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Falling out. All the bitches. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just kind of, t- I don't know. I was just kind of talking shit a little bit on that track. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, you need Jesus. Calm yeah. down. Damn. Right. Like, I don't know. Um, and I also, like, there was an interview Man, speaking of controversial artists right now, yeah, there's an interview from Kanye like years ago mm-hmm. where he's talking about musicality and how like nobody really, nobody really uses different time signatures anymore. Mm-hmm. Like everybody just goes four four. Oh yeah, you talked. I saw you tweet about or Snapchat. I was like, yeah, the song's gonna be in with like a three four. Yeah. Yeah. Three four. Cause I was, I was like, you know what? Like, let's mess with it. I wanted to, cause this was also in the time when I was trying to get better with beats, and I was like. I mean, a good way to show that I can work with nice. like different kinds of beats yeah, and, challenge yourself, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and um, I think that that's also part of what helped me get better. But yeah, I uh, I wanted to do something different, and Kanye just kind of like gave me a reason to do it. I guess and yeah. I was like, okay, let's work with something different, and it flowed. And it took me a little bit to find somebody, but I got somebody on it, and his name's Blake Labella. Dude's hella awesome, dude. Um, he was really quick to uh, hop on the track, and he sent it back somewhat quick, and I, I vibed with it hella. I mean, he's a really good dude. He's been really helpful with, like, helping promote the EP and um, hype me up and everything, talking about it. Um, we actually, like, split half and half. It's going to be, like, playlisted on Spotify and stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's what's up. How did you um, how did you find Blake LaBella? How did, you, how did that collaboration, like, happen? I think he just, like dropped a comment on one of my pictures on Instagram, and he was like, dude, let's work on something. He was thirsty. Yeah, he was hella thirsty. <laughs> yeah. He knew I got that drip. And uh, I was like, no, yeah, I'll think about it. And there was, like, one song by him that I was, like, really into, but I also didn't have anything that I was looking for a feature on. Yeah. Because also I'm still broke, so I don't want to pay anybody right. for a feature. Right. And eventually I was like, you know what, I'll try, because, like, I'll do features for free, so there's got to be somebody out there who... Who would too? Yeah, and yeah, I sent it to him. And, well, I guess I DM'd him first, and he was like, "Hell yeah, dude, send it my way." <laughs> and he's really easy on it, and he's still a friend. Yeah, yeah, we're That's playing what's up. It's good. Stuff. It's good to build relationships like through, like kind of like free features and free beats. You start to build this kind of like. It's almost community. like a niche, yeah. Yeah. Community, cause, yeah, yeah, cause I mean. <sighs> In the music industry, everybody's money focused. And, like, I get why, because it's really hard to make money. Like, I yeah. make less of a fraction of a penny on Spotify. Yeah, on every, Spotify. yeah. It's and it sucks. Ass. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you want to work with anybody, even somebody who's, like, even some people that I'm bigger than, like, they're still hungry. Like, they want, like, 50 bucks for a feature or something. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like, I don't have money for that. I'm pretty sure you don't have money for that. And, like... In a way, like, as long as you're not too big, I'm helping you out just as much as you are with me. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, I don't know, I think it's kind of an ethical question, in a way. It's sort just of? just, like, being, or just enjoying music, I guess. Yeah, like, like, is it about the love of music, or is it about, money. you know, getting bread? Right. <laughs> but on that same note, you said that you're uh, flying out to Atlanta mm-hmm. later this month. Uh, like, how does that, like, is he paying you, or? Um. So, we're using our... What we made off of an average, mm-hmm. we're using that to help pay for the video. Um, okay. The flight, I took care of myself. I'm not like too worried about that. Right. Um, I mean, I'm staying with him. 
mm-hmm. it's gonna be chill. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm not really paying him anything for it. He's not really paying me anything. Right. So, but like, so if like you know, like you think you're gonna make you know a dope video. Hell yeah. And like you know, great art down there. So like, and you say you you know you'll do features for free and like you don't have money to pay people. But like, if the music's good enough or has enough potential, like you're willing to like go that extra mile, right? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, at some point. Hopefully, at some point, I'll have to. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, at this point, I'm not really rushing to it. Mm -hmm. Because I also understand what it's like to have, like, two plays. Yeah. And just be like, shit. Like, I want to work with somebody, but nobody's going to work with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. At at some point, I also want to give other people opportunities. And I don't really dislike working with people. I think it's really fun working with people. I feel you. Yeah. So, track four. (laughs) <laughs> track four the final the closer to the ep hate that i hate you man i kind of go off on my ex on that one. Oh really yeah i mean i don't like rip her ass apart but i am just kind of like you cause a bunch of stress so is this a different ex or the same one different one okay this one's more recent she uh man, we were always fighting about something yeah and so i mean i just talk about like like i want to love you but i also really hate you yeah. because like all you do is cause stress. And um, it talks about, like, what I want out of a relationship and what I didn't like out of that one. Mm-hmm. I actually, like, really pissed her off when I posted a promo the other day on my Snapchat. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I had her friend, like, going off on me and shit. <laughs> I was like, not today. I ended up just leaving her ass on red. I wasn't dealing with that. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's art, it's too. It's art, you know? yeah. yeah. She's yeah. like, I can't believe you would say that. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, did, did you I mean, name drop her in the song? No. Uh, oh, then I've only done that yeah. once. Oh yeah. And she had a boyfriend, so. <laughs> I mean, like, if I think it still works. See, like to me, <laughs> if if I'm like talking shit and I don't name drop you, yeah, and you know who you are, then how am I being dishonest? Yeah, like you that's your I mean? problem. Like, yeah, you think that about yourself, obviously. Mm-hmm. I could, because you, I mean. I don't want to be like out of pocket, but you're you have seen. It sounds like you have a lot of exes. I don't. I don't have a not, lot. Of not exes. a lot, but like you have different exes, yeah, so you I have, have different, different songs, exes. and you don't name drop anyone, but they still know who they are. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't feel like that's something you can be mad at because it's cathartic. Yeah. yeah, I get that. You I mean, can be. You can be mad. Not everyone gets it. Yeah, like I. I get. I'm just in my artist bag right now. I get. <laughs> <laughs> I get her perspective, I guess, but. To some extent, like, I am just, I am talking about my perspective. Yeah. Uh, like, it's not necessarily that I want to, like, talk shit on her, but it's also, like, it's what it was. Yeah. And, oh, another thing, it's like, I say, uh, they saying we should break up, I'm thinking that we ought to. Mm-hmm. Like, I wrote that shit while we were still dating. <laughs> Damn. I was so pissed off at her, dude. I think she was, like, yelling at me because I made international DECA, mm-hmm. and I was going to go to that instead of her senior prom. Ah. Uh. And I was like... He was like, it's international. It's like, I see DC, baby. Yeah, yeah. I see DC. But that's bitch. like a big moment for you. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I was proud of myself. I didn't, honestly, like, I always wanted to make this stage at state, but I was like, I doubt that'll happen. And then I did. Mm. And then I was first. And I was like, y'all are wrong, but okay. <laughs> and so I went, and yeah, she was super mad about it. And like, there's some other stuff going on in my life at that time, too. And she didn't want to talk about that. So I was like, kind of done. Damn. And uh, I wrote that. I mean, that's real, though. Like, that's just unfiltered, like, emotion. Well, not unfiltered, but it's still emotion. Yeah, you know? and, you know, on the same, from the artist's perspective, too, you know, um, you know, most of the people that are going to listen to your music don't know who that is. Mm-hmm. You know, so, like, f- from her perspective, like, I understand why she'd be upset, but, like, the grand scheme of things, like, you know, that's not going to affect your life any. Yeah, you know like, your little, your little cousin, Sarah, or some shit, like, she's yeah. not going to listen to it, but, like, I heard her name is... Uh, man, I almost name dropped right there. <laughs> that got really close. Hey, we got Nick. He'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. You screw up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's not going to listen to him and be like, I know that girl. And yeah, she is a bitch. Like, <laughs> right. like no. It's like, I know a girl like this. <laughs> so I'm going to listen to this. Yeah. So I don't have to make this song. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like, with being out here in Warrensburg, like, my circle is kind of spreading a little bit more to Warrensburg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, anybody who hears it out here isn't going to really, like, connect it yeah, to a girl. I feel you. So, like, how was how was being in Warrensburg, like helped you with that? Helped you like network music, like you say, like PM Beta and Richard. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, 
I don't know. I'm a very independent dude. Not necessarily, like, music-wise. I just, like, I stay in my own little bubble. Mm-hmm. Stay with my people. Um, I don't really like to, like, socialize too much. Yeah, I, I can't get, tell. I get nervous. No, I'm serious. I'm, like, I'm, I for real can't Oh, tell. shit, okay. No, no, okay. No, no, that was, was a compliment. No, no, no. no I was no, like, no, what's your ass in this booth? But our first no. fight, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to be confrontational. I'm just saying, you always came across, like, on social media and, like, in person. It was just, like, a, like, a nice dude. Like, the first day I was here during, like, uh, kickoff or whatever, like, uh, we sat at the same table. At lunch, yeah. Yeah, and you were just, like, talking and chilling and i was like i wouldn't guess that you aren't social but i mean that's kind of like i guess i guess that goes into more of the intro the introvert like you can be social as an introvert but when you need to unwind yeah you go off by yourself for sure for sure and extroverts like go off with other people to unwind so that makes that makes sense i'm always still anxious i just mm-hmm. i'm like you know what like i like who i am yeah and i feel like a lot of people don't like who i am but, like, I like who I am, so I'm just going to be confident with that. Yeah, I so, you. I mean, yeah. Like, with my music, like, on social media and stuff, it's a little bit easier to be confident, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for a lot of people it is. Um, just because, like, they're not actually having to be in person with people. Mm-hmm. Not having to, like, show who they really are. And there's not that, like, instant judgment. You know yeah. I mean? And for me, like, I really don't stay on social media that often. Mm-hmm. If you... Like, I don't know if you noticed, but, like, most of the stuff that I post on social media is just about my music. Like, yeah, I don't that's really all post it is. much yeah. live stuff. So, with that, like, I'm proud of my music. I like my music. So, it's not too hard for me to feel comfortable, like, jamming out to it in a video or something. Just being like, hey, I hate that I hate you, bitch. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's not too hard. So, in a way, I'm just, I get in my zone with the music or with the character in the song or whatever. And I roll with it. Okay, I want to talk about the. I'm gonna talk about video later, like right after I ask you this question. But like, why is why did you call your EP dreams? They're all things that I dream about. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. That's straightforward. I, mean, I was hoping there was. I hope I was hoping like because I don't know. I like acronyms. I'm a fan of them. So you have the periods <laughs> between. <laughs> What? Acronym guy? Acronym. Yes. <laughs> I'm all about it. Acronym. Cream, though. snitch. Classic hip hop tracks. <laughs> no, but like everything, but like that's why I asked you about your name because you stylize it R dot H dot Y dot S dot and you're just like, that's just because stand out. Is it dreams just to stand out or does it stand for? No. Nah, oh, it's okay. just, I mean, my name, I tried because a lot of people would ask me like, what does Reese stand for? And I'd be like, Reese. Really high. I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Right. And so I never really had an answer, but I mean, it really was just like I was spelling it out for him. Like it's R H Y S Reese. Um, right. But no, Dreams is just, I. it took me a little bit to come out with the EP just because I couldn't figure out what name it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I mean, don't fall behind with those people in that topic. That I mean, today I run into with people all the time. Yeah. Like, People are on some shit. Yeah. And everybody has some problems in their life. And everybody needs just a reminder that everything's going to be okay. Yeah, And that they got, like, a voice for them. Um, So, I mean, that's always something that I'm dreaming about. And, like, X, that stuff was, like, always going through my head. I was dreaming about that. And my X is, I mean, I always dream about that one way or another. Yeah. This this all seems, like, more like nightmares than dreams. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. (laughs) I mean... I don't know. No, I feel you. Sometimes, I no, I see you. I see you. You're right. I don't know. I'm. I'm kind dreams of. Dreams is a lot catchier. I would. I would rather listen to dreams than nightmares. Yeah, but like, I think I don't know. Like, I can see dreams as a fitting title because it's like, like they're things like they're like nightmares, but you know, but like you I'm know, turning it into a dream. I guess. Yeah, from yeah. recent, but like from his perspective and like kind of the vibe I've been getting from his interview, like he's looking forward. Mm-hmm. You know, and like the music's a cathartic release, but like. You know, I think you realize, like, you know, tomorrow's coming, you know, and it's going to be brighter than yesterday, you know, if you can help it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I can kind of see that as for the Dreams title, and it kind of works, you know, for me as a listener. I mean, part of that, too, is, like, I'm not, like, super big, but, I, like, I have this other dude on the EP. Yeah. And it's my favorite music that I've ever dropped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, I'm hoping that, like, it takes me to whatever, like, the positive stuff that I dream of. That's right. Cool. That's what's up. What's and your... What's your favorite song? Is that fair? 
Is that Can you ask the name children? I don't have a favorite song of mine. Yeah. I don't think. So no. I'd have to emotionally I'd say powers. But like if I'm trying to like get pumped, hate that I hate you. Yeah. Like, that was how I kept a good attitude after the breakup. Do you have like a favorite bar from the well, I mean, you don't want to say like uh, rapper and everything, but like Yeah, when I say you don't wanna ice skate, but you skating on some thin ice. I love that line. Cause it's like so fucking true. You hear that? You hear that? Do the real bars thing. Real bar! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I was prepared that time. <laughs> I wasn't. I was <laughs> talking about that shit. <laughs> real writers. Oh my god. <laughs> you can't just come up here and be whack. We're not gonna let that happen. We'll reach out to you. If we want you on the show, we it's think exclusive. you're good. Well, bro, I already invited PM Beta, though. What? Oh, I invited him, though. That's right. Okay, that's the rule. Yeah. Don't don't invite yourself. I got you. Don't invite yourself. I got you. We'll tell you when it's time. Our people will call your people. <laughs> Nick will call you. Nick will it's call time. you. I guess, I'm, yeah, that's me. I'm our, pe- I'm our people. Yeah, Isaiah's is the talent organizer, so. <laughs> if you're not on, there's a reason, bro. Ooh. Oh shoot! And or sis. <laughs> um. Anyway, Wait, we gotta have real <laughs> bars, huh? Anyway, yeah, real bars only. There has to have a real bar moment in every podcast. Maybe it loses luster. I don't know. No, I mean, for but still, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Next, bring it on an unsuspecting guest. Whatever. Like. That's true. Yeah. Every time I've done it, someone's been surprised. Twice. Both Dude, times. Twice. Two times. <laughs> guest two. You're guest two. Ooh. On our podcast, yeah. That's Ooh. why I asked you because I wanted to do. <laughs> 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 I feel you. So your favorite, so your favorite emotionally powers, and your favorite like pump up is hate that I hate you. Yeah, I, I think that's that. gonna be the easiest to push. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Have you been thinking about what you're gonna do? Like I know it's, it hasn't even come out yet, but you seem to be one who's like looks like way forward. So like, do you have like, are you? Do you have anything, like, kind of like a schedule you go by? Like, I'm going to drop this in November, and then I'm going to wait, and then I'm going to drop this in January, and, and this in February, like, single January, single February. Yeah, sort of. Um, I mean, I still have some unreleased singles <coughs> that I didn't want to put out, like, too close to the EP, because I, ju- I was putting them out, like, every Friday or, like, every other Friday, because I had so many, like, piled up. Mm-hmm. Um, but after this, I don't know what I'm going to do right after i have some options that i'm like still working on and some that i'm done with but i think the ones that i'm done with i'm gonna wait since they're like they slow it back down Mm -hmm. i kind of want to add some speed before i slow it back down yeah and uh big projects i mean i have another ep that i'm working on at the moment um but it's not it's not what anybody's gonna be expecting like it's more instrumental oh yeah yeah than vocals that's what's up it's like nature and shit do you do you only have eps or do you have an album yet or do you have no i don't want to touch albums until i got a big name until oh not until you have a big big name name. yeah because i got man like if i drop an album Mm -hmm. i want to do like like this is like a big ass debut album yeah you know yeah it's like a big deal yeah yeah yeah, i don't want to be like this is his like junior album and it is sort of popular yeah Mm -hmm. i want to like choose the right time i don't want to hop onto it well i don't know it's, like it's a hard blue que- balls people yeah yeah that's true i don't know it's a hard it's probably a hard question to answer but like w- what level of popularity would you see that happening i don't know man like once i have like like people talking about it people asking me all the time commenting and shit i want people like i want people to get involved before i start like yeah you about want them to be like where's the album yeah yeah i don't want people to just be like an album they're like oh cool yeah yeah like i don't want people to just be like oh that came out y'all go look at it i want them to be like it's coming out in two months i need to hear it yeah and i can't wait for that first single off of it that's what's up yeah how often do you think you don't are you gonna have eventually like a really real conceptual ep where you like sit down and kind of make this like with a not like not that you don't have a purpose but like with like a story yeah for the sure whole project. sure yeah um yeah i th- i mean i don't know man i definitely will and i've like kind of started that a little bit 
um, like, just trying to keep stuff in, like, positivity, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, I've been thinking about putting some stuff on a project, but I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. But, like, since a lot of my stuff is, like, kind of focused on the negatives and talking about the sad stuff, I kind of thought about just, like, making a bunch of happy stuff and putting it out and just, like, a story of just having fun. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I just want to, like, like, today I've been the hallway's been feeling like a runway. Yeah. So I'm about to nosh in it or something. Huh. I don't know, but <clears throat> after uh, after my zone with P and Beta, um, I was like, you know what? I kinda like being upbeat a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I never really like tried that with an upbeat. More thing. of a flex than like a uh, but not out of spite. Because like you yeah, you yeah. you have a lot of spite in like a lot of tracks. Yeah. yeah. You're like, look at where I am now, bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rather than like, hey I'm just up. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like we're having to get, you know, like there's more to life than just the sad part. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, with my zone, I mean, we just, we really did just have a really good, I mean, even though I was nervous a little bit. Yeah. We all had a really good time recording that. And um, I don't know, I always just like getting this like really focused zone. Yeah, there's like good. Keeping stuff slow mm -hmm. typically like drifts a little bit on the negative side. But I don't know, just trying to like speed up the beats. Mm -hmm. Makes it easier. That's what's up. I I forgot to I, for, I like we zoned off on something and I no, kind of forgot totally to ask. Good. No, I think I, 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 forgot, I forgot to ask. It was like okay, so your she video, mm -hmm. right? It was for she. Yeah. Okay. How did that come about? Um. So we were about to leave for college. I think it was like one or two days before we left. Mm -hmm. You shot that before you came here? Yeah. I and couldn't tell. Yeah, I uh, I had my guy working on it, and it was like still somewhat soon after my breakup with my ex and i didn't want to like drop it right away yeah like piss her off too much yeah and i also had some other releases that i wanted to drop first i wasn't like rushing to that one because it wasn't like ooh, this one's like more important than the rest like i think no problems i wanted to drop before that and i'm so glad i did that one did really well mm -hmm. um but yeah no i i have a friend named kale kale holder he's the one that um directed and filmed it and his little brother Keaton, but um, he was like in broadcasting in my high school, and now he's going to S Columbia College. I don't even the Cougars, Columbia College. Shit, I don't know. It's like the really good like film school. Oh, like Columbia University in New York City. Oh, um, okay. That's different than what I was thinking of. Yeah. Shout out CC though. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> this one's no. in uh, Chicago. Is Chicago, Columbia. I would go, yeah. Something You're like that. You're the man on the laptop. That's that's know. what Nick's usually for, but he has it today. I yeah. could be wrong. He said the weeds there a lot. The weed there is a lot better. Okay. I'm not really up on the Warrensburg weed scene myself. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's not sticky. It's pretty dry. I feel you. But yeah. Do, uh, do drugs influence your music? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, not like. I don't know. It. It's more of like the zone. Like, being like, like it kind of gets you in the headspace to create. Yeah, and just like creating that like own own space for the music, mm -hmm. and like not feeling like you're on the ground. Yeah. I guess like. I feel you. I don't want it to sound dry. I feel you. It's very airy. I can tell how like. Do you only smoke weed? Yeah. Okay. I used to touch other stuff, but like since my friend went to rehab and stuff, I'm like yeah, you kind of overdose and stuff. Kind of scared you away. Not scared me, but like. I wanted to, I kind of wanted to, like, chill. I wanted to be somebody that he could, like, try and, oh, yeah. try and like, straighten up to be, like, because we used to, like, do shit together. And, yeah. Um, I was like, you know what? I should probably improve so that you can, like, have a reason to. I feel you. Because mm -hmm. if you're, yeah, because if you're, like, because if he's, like, not on that anymore and he's trying to get better and, he, and he's with you and you're doing this and it makes it a lot harder on him. No, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Where's Columbia? Co oh, it's in Columbia C -C -C. College, Chicago. Columbia College, Chicago is an independent, nonprofit, liberal arts college specializing in arts and media disciplines with approximately 7,000 students pursuing degrees and more than 60 undergraduate and graduate degree programs. Choose red. Choose red. Choose red. Snout's out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you to Col Columbia College for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to him about that. Yeah, hey guys, you want to send money your way? Go ahead. <laughs> but, yeah. um, I mean, he did that for free, too. Really? Yeah, like I'm I'm good friends with him and my adoptive brother, he's really good friends with him. Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, like all the people in the video, I mean, there's like a probably like 20 or 30 second part where I have like some friends behind me jamming out to it, yeah. acting like super corny, like, <laughs> and yeah. um, like this is just kind of the point of it. But yeah, I mean, it really was just like a bunch of kids getting together for like one last like hangout and like jam session I before we you. went off to school. So I thought that it was awesome because mm -hmm. yeah, like I was like, man, like I don't know when I'm gonna see you guys next, and we just got together and filmed this music video. It was do so you, fun. Do you have any more ideas for videos? Um, I have some, but I also am not about to drop a bunch of money on a music video. Yeah, I feel you. Because I also don't have, like, a bunch of, like, subscribers. Nobody really, like, listens to my stuff yeah. on YouTube. I think videos are important, though. Because, like, because you can post, because you, cause you can put, like, a snippet on Twitter and a snip or a snippet on Instagram. And then yeah, yeah. just with the, uh, the visual to complement the audio, like, that's a big thing that, like, 6 9 Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like I hate six nine, but like he really he does use it to his advantage for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, if I if I heard somebody screaming all the time, yeah, I would kind of need a music video to <laughs> put a face to it. <laughs> for sure. You know, like mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. I mean, I think that they're really important, and I I personally want to do a a bunch. Yeah. Um. Once I have the chance to, once I have the resources to, but because I mean. I love dancing, yeah. and I'm a pretty good dancer, so, like, I really want to just, like, go off and just, like, have a bunch of fun yeah. in some music videos. So, I'm looking forward to that, but at the moment, no, nah, I don't really, not really focus on that. That's what's up. Nick, Colby, what do you yeah. think? You guys gonna film, you guys can uh, film some music videos, you think? <laughs> he said, uh, don't put him on the spotlight. Like that. I, was asking. <laughs> I don't know. He that doesn't want to do music. Like, nah, I'm just asking. Colby doesn't even have thing? a mic in front of him. He so said, no. <laughs> He's just not prepared to answer. This man's music sucks. <laughs> no, I'm just asking. I don't know if they do that or not. I feel you. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm in a, I'm in a weird mood. Where are we all? <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I feel you. are you? I don't know. I feel all right. Who cares? <laughs> 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 um. So as we kind of close up our podcast here, Reese, I did want to ask you just, uh, we were talking about 6 9 and uh, videos and like, I don't know, we've been talking about a lot of stuff and we've specifically been talking about like how you've collabed with people, just kind of develop your own style. Um, so just kind of like a fantasy question, if you could collab with one artist, just one, who would it be and why? Man, I think about this all the time in the shower, and I have no clue. <laughs> Seriously, Do we need I to sit. get water running? <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. It's the only way. Um, I don't know. I would say... Uh, it's a tough question. What if it's like a duo group? No, you can't. No, no it's fine. Like, one group. like it can be like a group or yeah. like, oh. like, a, like an act. Okay. Y'all ever heard of Mansions? No. Mm -mm. Um, I don't like think Black so. Black Bear and Mike Posner. Oh. Uh, I've heard of Mike Posner, okay. And I've heard of Black Bear. And yeah. Both. I see. Yeah, both. I'm trying to think. Like, hmm. You guys ever heard of Rich White Girls or Shut the Fuck Up? I don't think so. Um, I don't know. They're not like super mainstream. They got like kind of popular with that album. Yeah. But... You know, usually they do their own solo music. Yeah. And personally, I don't usually mess with Mike Posner. I think his voice is kind of annoying. Yeah. But this album was like a full concept album, mm -hmm. like front to back, runs super smooth. Really? And just instrumentally, production wise, vocally, poetically, the thing goes. That's what's up. It's super deep. Would you want it to be like they're on a Reese song or are you on a Mansion song? Me on a Mansion song. That'd be tight. That's probably better. Yeah. Yeah. That'd probably get more people. Yeah. I feel. I like mean, not necessarily like viewing wise, wanting to do that, but like working, working my voice onto their style, I think would be a lot easier. Right. Just like, like artistically, that would be your. Yeah. Dream. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I'm mm -hmm. glad you said that instead of like the you know said like oh I want a feature with Kanye. And What's you, wrong with that? Well, there's nothing, but like for the reason to get huge. You know yeah. What I'm saying? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Because I could yeah. easily. Yeah, I could easily name somebody like pretty big. Like, but, like, yeah, like I they want have a feature this with Drake. Yeah, or Justin oh, Bieber. Man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I would. I don't think I would ever do anything with Drake. Honestly. Ever, yeah, even ever. if he was like, "Yo, come on, man, we got to make this really cool song." <laughs> I have a good idea. I like your sound. Did we trash Drake? You want to sign the OVO? <laughs> We're tr we trash Drake every week. <laughs> every week. I don't care. Man, really? I don't care. I'm, I mean, I'm he, not he, gonna, like... I, bro. He's too. Bi he always comes up like. 
You talked about Kevin Abstract. We talked about Brockhampton last time. Yeah. Yes. Like, Drake Wait, is always about? comes up because he's that big. So you know about Brockhampton and Kevin Abstract? Have you guys ever listened to Roy Blair? Yeah. Cat Heaven? Yes. Mm. That was a tight album. Dude, I love that album. That one's so good. It's a tight album. Hell yeah. Um, shit, I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, Features or something. I don't know. Dream Features, man. Fun. Oh, yeah, Drake. Drake. Yeah. Drake. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to, like, talk trash on him. Not really, but. I will. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. He's not signing my checks. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't know. I just, I, I get why people like him, mm-hmm. but I don't. It's just, it's, <laughs> I'm it's not for me. I'm hating the hate now. No, it's, it's, it's funny hate. for me. I'm sorry. No, I feel that way. Like I don't. I mean, I don't necessarily hate the guy, but like it's not my kind of music. I like I, I'm that same way with like Post Malone. Yeah, like, yeah. He's probably like he's probably a fine dude, but I don't care for his music. No, Drake's the nicest guy in the world. Like actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen the guys playing video, dude. <laughs> Not like that, but <laughs> that was. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, it's too fake for you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, like, what was I going to say? Oh, back a little, a little less off the extra stuff. How do you measure success with your. Like, would you say that you're successful so far? Not really. No, I don't know. I uh, I think that I've progressed, but I don't think I've reached like my like. No, and you haven't like plan for success. You haven't peaked. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm. I don't know. I just. I think that I've picked up some really good fans and some really loyal people. Mm. Made some good connections, and I mean, honestly, this is, in a way, this is kind of my first year. Yeah. Right. Like I feel you because you're like I feel you. Like I looked back because I was. I was taking something off of, well, I mean, not, not taking it off, but I was taking something that I had on SoundCloud and, like, moving it on to Spotify. Mm-hmm. And, like, that track was, like, my first track where I was singing on it. Yeah. And I noticed that I dropped that in 2018. Hmm. And I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah, so you're, sort of, yeah, so <laughs> yeah. you're sort of, like, so you're, you're kind of, like, getting out of your cocoon, yeah, so to speak. And you're finally, like, spreading your, you're really starting to spread your wings. Yeah, you know you got dreams coming out. I'm a peacock, you gotta let me fly. You got a, you're a peacock. <laughs> you're pretty. You're pat. <laughs> Hell yeah, pretty boy bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and got, got Nick. <laughs> He's about to hand me that three hundred dollars. Hmm. <laughs> That's before. But then, uh, <laughs> That's a new inside joke. <laughs> the camera. One that we're not discussing on the podcast. That's fine. That's fine. We don't have yeah, to. that's okay. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a good callback. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Had a clap back. Not it is fine. What? So like, so what is your ultimate goal? Like world domination? <laughs> I mean, isn't that every musician's goal? I don't know. I, I'm not not, not necessarily. I mean, like that's a dream. Just make a living. I want to touch people. Okay. <laughs> That sounded really weird. For three hundred dollars. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh man, I had that one coming. Now, like, I want to touch people's hearts. Like, kind of like I said about the debut. That's album. murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's being serious. All right, he's being right, serious. Right, I'm sorry. together. I'm sorry. I feel you. Yeah, like, look, 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 you want to connect on an emotional level. Yeah, and like, okay. I want to have people waiting for me, and uh. Like the debut album, like I want people to be looking forward to it and stuff. But success, personally, like if I'm if I'm happy with my music and I like the way it sounds and I want to listen to it too, then I'd say I'm successful. You're satisfied. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like it's for the people a lot of the time, but like sometimes it's also just for me. And so I would, just share it with people. So would you be okay with, you know, having the, having this connection with, I don't know, like a hundred or two hundred fans? Like loyal fans, and then just kind of never really making a living off of that. I mean, hopefully not, because it's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's a dumb question. I mean, that was a dumb question. Well, no, I but think I mean, it, oh, to some extent, I mean, yeah, I don't think I would be too disappointed. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, I'm kind of a loner, and I kind of like to be alone, so well, yeah, probably would turn out for the best. <laughs> but I mean, like one. Like, one of my dreams of mine is to, like, have, like, a cabin in the woods or something, like, away from everybody, where I can just build a studio in it, mm-hmm. and just, like, work on that shit all the time. Me too. Like, yeah, like, hunt all my own food. Isolation. 
You know? Yeah. Oh, you hung your own food? You're on the Boney <laughs> Varistees. You're on the... Yeah, dude. And that's tight. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. I fuck with that. You got anything? I think that's a great place to wrap up. Colby, you got anything? No. Nick, you got anything? I don't. I got nothing. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say before? It's over? Where can we find you online? Yeah. Um, there. Check me out on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, all the platforms. Twitter, Instagram. Oh, Twitter. Yeah. Shit, I forgot about those. Um, Twitter is just Reese G4, R-H-Y-S G4. And Instagram is probably easiest to just search for my artist name because my, my handle is Richard Daniel Everby. I, the first time I saw that, I was a little confused. I was like, and is, that his, I was like okay. "Is that his actual name?" And then, and then, and then, like a week later, I wasn't Richard even, th- I wasn't even Everby. thinking, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about it. But like something in my head was just like, "Oh, <laughs> richer than you'll ever be." Oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> which is like totally inaccurate. But I thought yeah. it was fucking funny when I made it. Yeah. And um, what? Okay, here's what kills me about it is like when people see Richard Daniel Everby. Yeah. They'll call it to me and they'll call me Richard. Because mm-hmm. they think that my name's actually Richard Daniel Everby. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, isn't your name Richard? I'm like, no. I'm like, oh. Then why is your name on Instagram Richard Daniel Everby? Sometimes, like, I had a kid who called me Dick for like a week. <laughs> and I was really confused. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, why does this dude keep calling me a dick? Like, I'm being nice to him. <laughs> and then he said something about Richard Daniel Everby. <laughs> and I just. <laughs> I look at him and I was like, dude, like, <laughs> you, you realize that, like, everybody calls me Reese. Like, I don't know. Stop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stop calling me a dick, Get some man. help. Yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm being nice I, to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dick. Yeah, I, I don't know. Once he figured it out, though, he was like, oh, shit. He kind of felt stupid. I said, it's okay, but, I mean, you're a dick. <laughs> He's the dick. He's the dick. <laughs> Pay that back. being that being said, <laughs> Reese, stargazing podcast dreams. You trying to say I'm a dick? No, I'm just playing. Three hundred. No. I'm just wrapping up the show. <laughs> I'm just wrapping up the show. <laughs> Reese, stargazing podcast dreams. Dreams, November second. Out right now. <coughs> out now. When this Hell is yeah. out. When this is out, dreams will be out. All right. Listen to this and play dreams at the same time. Thank you guys for uh, listening. Play dreams really. Watching. Loud. Subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, disliking. It's important. We'll take dislikes too. Haters are motivators. All of them. Except Drake. Oh, shit. What? Is Drake, uh, Drake going to be a hater? Does he call him out so much? I don't care. Let's <laughs> <laughs> end the show. I'm going to just, Can we just, I'm end just the show, stand please? by. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm done. for just ending the show. <laughs> don't yeah. turn that off yet. Don't turn it off yet. Don't turn it off Chill. yet. You have to act like we're done. Chill first. out, Colby. You have to act like we're done first, and then I gotta say thank you, Reese. It was yeah, tight. No problem. Man. Oh, cool, man. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, dude. Anytime. Yeah. All right, now you got it. <laughs> there you go. That was good. I like the ending of that. That is one lockdown. I, I guess. I guess it's over. Well, we missed that whole so. thing. Five minutes in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fine though. Not just the concepts and ideas you have, but right. into the music you make, like writing, producing, and all that. Uh, I mean, it's it's very extensive. When I set out, like I said, I, I finished an album when I started this one. This one was supposed to be a mixtape. I mean, technically, to me, it's still a mixtape, but I sold it, so yeah, that makes it right. an album. You put it on streaming services. Yeah, it's you everywhere. Can't, you yeah. can't not.